I'll spend a couple of slides next uh, to explain how the one can understand that what dose you are giving, what concentration it will be producing uh, by assuming certain mathematical uh, formula or mathematical concepts. When the drug enters the center compartment through direct injection, it uh, uh, it is re uh, it is reaching the uh, affect site as well as it is being distributed to the peripheral tissues, high uh, vasculature tissue, low uh, blood flow tissues, at a rate which is determined by specific time constants. And similarly, it is coming back. Once you stop, it is coming back from that uh, tissues into the center compartment. And that's the reason the context sensitive half life. When you say that if you give for longer period of time, it takes longer period time for the any drug concentrated plasma concentration to decrease because it is a st stored in the peripheral tissues from which it keeps moving into the central tissue. And there is a uh, you know uh, distribution coefficient from the center compartment to the effect side. But there is a fixed elimination. If the plasma concentration is kept constant, there is a fixed elimination with a fixed constant of KIO, which you say, uh, which eliminates constant rate at which is eliminating. eliminating. But this rate which is going into the periphery is, uh, 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 is, uh, which is going to the periphery, that keeps decreasing because as the, 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 the those things get keep getting saturated the tissues, the amount which is leaving the center compartment to that uh, peripheral compartment keeps decreasing, whether it is rapidly equilibrating or slowly equilibrating compartment. So if we can find out these constants in your patient or maybe in your group of patients, uh, uh, we may be able to make a formula from which we can define, okay, this much drug, this rate of infusion, this is the concentration which is predicted. When you give a, a propofol, this is a propofol curve, bolus of propofol, it's immediately false concentration falls, then it falls slowly and then it falls very slowly later on. This is the elimination, this is the slow uh, equilibration compartment, this is a fast equilibration compartment and the initial concentration into the uh, into the blood which is you load, which is say the loading dose which you gave into the center depending on the volume of distribution, exactly not equal to the blood volume but little more than blood volume, that determines the initial concentration and uh, which you can find out from you know just extending this gar back to the, uh, the uh, to the you know y axis so some formula which describes this relation between the dose and the concentration is a pk is called pharmacokinetic model and the concentration of the drug and its effect on organ which is whether it's brain or any other organ for which the drug is being given, that is a pharmacodynamic model. We, uh, many years ago, we used uh, uh, this uh, thing, uh, this uh, method to find out the PK in young healthy adult Indian subjects for propofol, injecting a bolus of uh, drug and uh, 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 then measuring the plasma concentrations in the, uh, in the blood. Uh, at specific time intervals starting from 2 minutes, 4 minutes, etc. up to 24 hours. And we found this graph of mean plus minus standard deviation of concentration over a period of time. We made it a log uh, of this and plotted and that gives the typical three uh, curves which I was trying to explain in the earlier figure. And after applying some mathematical calculation, what we found was the center volume of distribution in our patients was almost about 13.5 liters, which was directly related to the weight of the patients. And the clearance was about one liter per minute. And there are lots of models that were available uh, at that point of time when we did. But most of the models, most common was Marsh, Schneider, and we were not sure whether this will be applicable in our. We just wanted to be sure whether the plasma concentration which uh, in our patients is a similar to what uh, is being achieved in the western uh, population as shown by the thing. Fortunately, uh, we did a study uh, to evaluate uh, uh, the, the deviation of the you know predicted concentration. The deviation was less than 10% as compared to the uh, western models where the deviation was 25 to 30% from the predicted. So we found that this was a good model to be used. And we compared to the Marsh model, uh, we, our uh, initial volume of distribution was 0.214 liter per kg. 
while Mars was little uh, more than that. And similarly, the time constants were uh, uh, familiar. Uh, uh, people who are using it, they will, it will be familiar to that, that you know, they are also quite a bit similar. Once you have these, uh, 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 these constants and the, uh, and the variable volumes, the different parameters, you can define the, uh, you can find out the loading dose, which is the target concentration which you want to achieve plus the volume of center compartment. You have a weight of 60 kg, you know that uh, the, it will be center volume of distribution will be 12.5 liter or something like that. And you want to maintain a 3 microgram per uh, ml concentration. You just multiply by that, that will come to a milligram somewhere around 35, 36 milligram of propofol. That's why sometimes people think, why are you are giving only small dose of propofol? That's the reason. I mean, uh, we had a uh, you know discussion with one of the senior uh, colleagues uh, many years ago, and uh, uh, you know they were surprised that our values are so underestimating the actual things. But then later on, uh, the reason why we give two milligram per kg initially is so that you are not going to give anything for last five six minutes. So that's the problem. So you want to maintain. So you produce deep anesthesia right in the beginning and then maintain uh, some bit of anesthesia after five minutes, for five minutes, till the inhalation aesthetics takes over. So all these formulas, if you can put into syringe pumps, they, uh, uh, you know, program your syringe pumps with that or may use computer to control the syringe pump using this formula, you will be able to make a target controlled infusion. So it's simple, define the loading dose based on the uh, target concentration and initial volume of distribution and then re decreasing rate of infusion which is dependent on the fixed constant of elimination and variable constant of distribution into the rapidly as well as slowly equilibrating uh, compartment. So once you inject the uh, the dose it will produce uh, uh, it will uh, the, the blood concentration will be achieved quickly but the fat side concentration will take some time because as KEO or the equilibration constant which I am explaining and the plasma concentration will you know after a bolus they'll uh, you know so, uh, the the sorry the amount of drug which you'll uh, need to uh, keep giving to the patient keep decreasing over a period of time it's a decreasing rate of infusion and the same algorithm is put into these programmed uh, you know uh, pumps and they are called the target control infusion pumps and they're very costly uh, I don't know, Dr. Paliwal, it costs lakh, two lakh, how much? <laughs> the people who are using, I, I think it's not less than one lakh, each, two lakhs. Well, it's what I've done, just put that formula into that. That's all, nothing else. So why can't we do that? Same. Dr. Uh, Mr. Rangi, this is a question for you. <laughs> why why we can't do that? Uh, he's, uh, they are the people who have made the closed loop necessary delivery system product from my you know concept. So is the, this model different in children? We did a study in the children and what we found the volume of distribution was a little more than almost, you know, double uh, than the uh, normal adults. And uh, a bit uh, clearance was also a little more. So when you're using in pediatrics, you need to have a, uh, use different models. And one need to understand the neonates have increased sensitivity, so the doses have to be decreased, but infants have increased a requirement because of increased distribution volume as well as increased clearance and uh, from uh, three years to puberty the volume of distribution is double th than the adult so you can imagine that that's why you require higher dosages in the children so now once you are, uh, know how to achieve a target concentration you know for tiva what concentration you need uh, normally, we adjust the concentration based on the response to the patient to a, a, a given concentration. So we can stepwise keep increasing concentration and keep seeing the response. Ultimately, for a you know sedation, we can have a, a observer assessment scale of three, or maybe deeper uh, painful painless uh, surgery. If you want to use only the propofol or any other sedative agent, you have to have a zero. So uh, you can stepwise increase, but it's quite time consuming. So as I said, uh, the people use for different components, different uh, uh, drugs. So if you are using hypnosis, uh, using propofol for hypnosis and fentanyl, you need to understand that fentanyl may have also effect on the interaction with the propofol. And so the concentration of propofol required for a given effect will also decrease. I'm not going to touch here the muscle relaxation. That's uh, you know very simple. And uh, I'll just try to explain a few things uh, on the analgesic and the hypnosis. So... Uh, 
The only problem with the muscle relaxation, once you are relaxed, the movements are gone, so only to depend on the blood pressure, heart rate, or predicted plasma concentration, or some way, other way of uh, assessing uh, the, the, the depth of anesthesia, hypnosis, or analgesia. And we have uh, all sorts of uh, organ dysfunction which can alter the uh, PK of the drugs. So what a given drug will produce a plasma concentration will be uh, higher in a patients who have altered uh, these dysfunction, the patients LV dysfunction, renal dysfunction, they will have higher concentration. So we have a uh, objective depth of monitoring the EEG uh, derived parameters or uh, other uh, uh, heart rate variability etc. And uh, this is the most common thing which is used by uh, most of us here, sitting here. They may be using a, some different concept but basically process EEG. And we, uh, you know, two, uh, more than two decades ago, uh, along with Dr. Preeti Matthews and Dr. Setu, we did a, uh, uh, you know, we had a German friend who gave us the TCI pump and we used that uh, those days, uh, way back in 2008-9. And we found the relation of the different concentration with the uh, different uh, BIS and uh, entropy. We step by increase the concentration and try to find the uh, the, the uh, observer assessment scale as well as the is bis as well as ent entropy and plotted these graphs. I'll just uh, briefly tell you that the predicted plasma concentration of, uh, uh, for the loss of conscience was was uh, 2.8. Mind you, this is only propofol, not propofol fentanyl, and uh, uh, bis was around 46 at that point in time. And for loss of uh, painful response, it was five. And the BIS at that was capitated to be something you know, 20. And uh, if you compare it with other studies, there was slightly lesser requirement as compared to what was quoted in the earlier uh, Western studies. We did another study uh, using different fentanyl concentrations to find out what it has effect on the profile requirement. And we found that a fentanyl concentration of 1 to 1.5 nanograms uh, per ml produces a drastic decrease in the, uh, uh, you know, uh, profile requirement uh, from 1.926 to 1.68 for uh, a scale of 3 and uh, th from 3 to 2.38 for, uh, you know, scale of 0 or that is no painful response. But beyond that, it was not much uh, uh, change. And this is shown similarly by the earlier, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, uh, authors that uh, uh, the, uh, the the for fentanyl use for uh, uh, loss of painful response uh, to the propofol uh, use uh, was uh, decreased by 0.63 nanogram per ml of fentanyl by 50 percent, while 3 nanogram per ml uh, reduced it to 80 percent. While beyond that, the it was the effect was not much. So we need to understand that a small dose of fentanyl can decrease your profile requirement. How it does, whether it is hemodynamic alterations and decreasing the profile, uh, you know, disposition, or it is, you know, some uh, competition of the polymer binding sites. And uh, there have been shown other types of interactions like inhibition of cytochrome P450 by propofol. Ketamine is an inducer of cytochrome 450. So we need to understand that uh, what is shown by the individual drug assessment or the drug PKPD modeling may not uh, hold mm -hmm. good when you're using combination of these. That's why nowadays when I see people using somebody using ketamine, somebody using dexamethasone, lignocaine, magnesium, so many combinations, what happens to the patient that uh, the God can only uh, uh, make an assessment <laughs> or those people who are daily doing, they, they know this much, this much of, uh, you know, mixture will produce this much, but then you can't teach uh, these things to students. And normally, if uh, you require uh, about for sedation, about a one microgram per ml of propofol, but older sicker may have different requirement. Uh, there's a um, Dr. Paliwal will be talking more about these uh, different models. I, I hope otherwise we can discuss these things later on. And uh, uh, you know, the, when we uh, we we can assess the concentration and the response to stimuli to see whether that concentration is adequate. So if you have intubated at 3 microgram per ml and the patient doesn't move, that means that's good enough. So these sort of assessments you can make uh, in addition to the, uh, uh, the knowledge available in the literature. Because each patient varies. Somebody, you know, may be falling on this 
side of the graph that means he requires very small concentration while another may be this on this side may be very high concentration so you need to titrate uh, uh, individually more so older patients with and asa 3 5 you need uh, more than 3 you need to have a lower concentrations this thing now a bit about marsh model uh, uh, and uh, schneider model the schneider model basically has a fixed amount of uh, uh, you know the volume of distribution it doesn't vary with the weight and uh, uh, so which means that uh, it may not be able to produce sufficient concentration uh, uh, in a given patient who is larger in uh, weight so uh, marsh model varies with the weight the initial volume of distribution and uh, two to three concentration microgram is good enough especially if used with the fentanyl while uh, uh, for uh, uh, you know if you're using uh, no uh, fentanyl then you may be to use uh, one or two microgram per ml higher concentration and once you target effect set concentration another uh, issue comes you know if you are targeting plasma concentration you give the drug loading dose you produce the decreasing rate of infusion and the job is done while producing effect set concentration quickly you want to achieve you need to have a higher plasma concentration to achieve effect set concentration which may have its own harmful effects like see in when the when the blood uh, perfusion in the brain the uh, this takes some time for the uh, the the concentration in the blood to be achieved by uh, decrease by increased time of diffusion and it all depends on the different drugs which have different uh, uh, distribution uh, coefficients those with the high distribution coefficient they will e equilibrate quickly and they may not require very high plasma concentration to achieve a given uh, target uh, uh, effect set concentration this is just a uh, graph shown that when you give a propofol concentration a bolus produce this much concentration it takes time for the effect set concentration to go up and by the time the propofol concentration is decreasing uh, the peak is achieved and then the slowly the, uh, the the profile concentration has gone down but then the effect side consists higher it takes time for it to fall towards the below the effect side cons uh, below the uh, uh, you know the recovery concentration so time to peak effect is one concept based on which the f f uh, coefficient of uh, equilibration or distribution uh, coefficient have been uh, you know uh, defined if more that uh, time to peak effect that means it is the KEO is less and if the the time to effect is less that means KEO is uh, more and uh, uh, for fentanyl uh, I'll just skip this so I'll just talk of uh, if you use different KEO in your model now you have made a this is the volume of distribution this is the uh, rate constants for uh, distribution to the uh, different uh, uh, compartments so now if you use different KEO you may require different uh, plasma site plasma, plasma concentration to achieve a different a specific uh, effect site for in this case no uh, if you are using ku of 0.26 which means slow distribution which means you require a higher plasma concentration to achieve uh, effect site concentration if you are using a ku of 1.2 probably you may not uh, require that much this is only 6 microgram required here it is some 9 microgram effect and mind you this this plasma concentration is a plasma the concentration which goes to the uh, before going to the brain it goes to the heart also so it will produce uh, hemodynamic disturbances more in a vulnerable patient so <coughs> sick patients we always try to you know use either plasma concentration targeting or uh, KU of high so that the plasma concentration achieved for a given effect uh, uh, site concentration may not be that high so this is the green is the effect site concentration so uh, I just wanted to show this graph to show that a higher effect set as, as given effect set concentration you require higher plasma concentration so uh, why do we need automation in our anesthesia practice you know it's a complex lots of things you people are doing there's a you know more complex physiology you're looking at your surgeon is bleeding i mean so the patient is bleeding surgeon is pulling pushing the intestine or the heart or the lungs and there are lots of issues which on the way uh, can lead on to especially if you are working 24 hours late night your effects uh, you know concentration may decrease 
No, the human errors which form a component about more than, uh, you know, four-fifths of the anesthetic uh, incidents. Uh, can some of these be decreased if you automate some of the activities like, you know, giving drugs routinely uh, and monitoring, etc. Right? So, this is the today's anesthetist, what so many things are doing. So, something if you can, you know, use... Uh, uh, a drug like a drug delivery system you can automate you may be able to cut down a few of these uh, uh, issues and so what we did we interface we thought the EEG monitoring through the BIS uh, monitor can be a good feedback to control propofol so what we did we uh, you know uh, um, uh, interface the, the BIS monitor with the syringe pumps through the uh, computer and similarly, so many other pumps to control the neuromuscular blocking agent to the fentanyl and inotropes. They were, they, the, and uh, the alteration of profile cons, uh, with the uh, syringe pumps uh, were producing a, a control of the uh, BIS. And the similar, the heart rate and blood pressure monitoring and control using drugs, fentanyl as well as inotropes will control the, you know, the analgesia as well as the blood pressure. And they were all, con uh, uh, you know, connected through an interface uh, box to the computer and the algorithm was working. It's, uh, you know, it's little confusing, uh, difficult to read. Uh, but the simple, uh, simplified algorithm, I'll say, is you just keep te test checking five, every five second bis. And after 30 seconds is make an alteration to the set target profile concentration. Uh, based on how far it is away from the target, the bis is away from the target, and every 30 seconds is keep changing the rate if required, and uh, every five seconds is collect the bis. Further, what we did was we uh, and uh, in addition to the uh, this thing and the heart rate blood pressure monitoring, we uh, added entitled inhalation aesthetic concentration monitoring. We put it in, uh, into that algorithm and uh, entitled concentration. Uh, uh, was monitored and uh, if it was not as per requirement we uh, the, uh, the 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 anesthetic delivery was changed and what we did we used syringe pumps to deliver isoflurane into the expiratory limb and uh, the way you know uh, uh, you have seen anaconda where you know sedation in the in the ICU so we use this and uh, we uh, controlled isoflurane uh, anesthesia using uh, uh, this algorithm, uh, the, uh, our uh, closed loop anesthesia delivery system. Uh, this about two decades ago, we made this system and uh, we published, uh, we not published, we presented initially into the Paris uh, World Anesthesia Conference way back and Dr. Jatana, I don't know whether he is here in the, in the uh, audience, he's, uh, he promised that he will come. He was the person who helped me in uh, initially making uh, the initial system, he was working at Semiconductors Limited. And this is the article which I was talking of, Dr. Bhupesh and Dr. Week were my co-authors. And what we found was not only CLADS is possible, is effective and efficient as compared to the manual control. You require less dosages, you are less overshoot of the BIS because you don't give boluses like that manually. And the, the more number of uh, times the BIS is within the target range than in a manual control. So, so more precise control of the BIS as well as less uh, in intra-individual variability like another experienced person comes, the variability less, inexperienced the variability more. So, this is uh, uh, working as expert uh, uh, control around the clock, expert eye or brain. It's not that uh, you during the uh, process, the, uh, the workshop, you will come to know the experiences of the other people who use this uh, system in different ways. It reduces the workload during busy time, cut down the human errors, and uh, it works same whether it is the middle of night or uh, right uh, in the early morning. And as I said, both anesthetics, analgesics, muscle relaxants, and the blood pressure inotropes can be uh, uh, can be controlled uh, using this. These are dozens of uh, publications uh, with uh, my co-authors. And uh, uh, on this, we have patent for this for Europe, US, and Indian patent. And even the closed loop blood pressure control system patent has been in this. Once you have something on your computer, you can do it through the internet remote control. So telinesthesia 
uh, from one place to another is capable. We have done it using this uh, thing. And now the latest modular closed loop Nasir delivery system, which has been uh, developed with our technology partner, uh, uh, which is I think you, is visible here. So where this is integrated with the monitor as well as uh, the, the the syringe pumps in one uh, piece uh, uh, is being in use for uh, uh, in, in, in testing for last couple of years and now it is being used clinically also. And the future is that uh, if we have keep having this data, we'll be able to use AI to make it more uh, individual precise in a CZR delivery system. Aim is not that we'll be, uh, you know, giving an anesthesia blindly, but like the uh, autopilot uh, cockpit where the pilot are also sitting uh, and watching what's going on with the machines and uh, using his uh, intelligence to overrule if there's any problem with the system. And now we have joined with the a group of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Imphal uh, in this uh, where we are doing studies using this machine for EEG uh, based uh, depth of synesthesia using AI uh, uh, machine learning. Thank you very much for listening and uh, thank you.